Hello, my name's Neil, I'm a builder, and this is Trade Secrets. A tip when laying old or new soft bricks is to dunk them in a bucket of water before laying. This stops the brick drawing the moisture out of the mortar, and believe it or not, one brick can hold one pint of water. If you're planning to sand a floor with an electric sander, make sure any nails, even those that are flush, are knocked well down, because if you don't, you could end up spending a fortune on sandpaper. This is a tip for anyone laying a concrete path, especially a sloping one. After you've troweled it smooth, don't leave it like that, because it can become slippery in the winter. What we do is tamp the surface, thus, and this gives a non-skid finish and stops nasty accidents. When routing cable through timber joists, always remember to drill through the same direction the cable will be running. That way you have a nice smooth run for your cable to sit through. Most people use a chisel for smoothing putty, but I often find this drags. A good alternative is a bit of copper tube with a flattened end, file off the burrs, and for some strange reason, it won't drag. When putting a sand and cement mix on a bare wall of brick, a good idea is to coat it with a solution of PVA and water. This prevents the sand and cement drying out too fast and therefore cracking. Here's a really good tip. When pointing a wall, to finish it off, use a piece of hose pipe. It gives a really good result every time. tip for anyone wishing to mark out a building without using string lines for people to trip over. Use a handful of dry sand and mark your building out. If you don't like it, then you can sweep it up and start again. The secret to cutting a brick cleanly is to put it on a pile of sand, one hit, clean cut. When you've finished applying the sand and cement to the wall, get it roughly flat, but don't over trowel it, don't keep going over it because it draws the water to the surface and that tends to make it fall off. Wait a few minutes and then buff it up gently with a float and then go over it with a wet sponge. A difficult job to do on your own is to hang a door. To make this easier, place a wedge underneath the front of the door, lift the door into position until level, and then insert your first screw. This holds the door level and makes a difficult job a lot easier. One day, a few years ago, as I was trying to fit a door, not very successfully, an old Irish builder friend of mine said to me, what you need to do is measure twice, cut once, rather than the other way around, which I think is good advice. This is a useful homemade device made of a piece of 4x2 and a wedge. You cut the angle for the wedge, put it on the ground, take your door, put it in, fix your wedge, and it's solid. Now your hands are free to do the work you want. A work 
workman, they say, is only as good as his tools, and a blunt edge tool is no good to anyone. So what we do is make a box from plywood to fit the chisel. And then, before we actually put the chisel into the box, we take a piece of oiled cotton waste and drop it in. This keeps the end of the chisel sharp and ready for use the next time. If you need to mark some timber and you don't possess a marking gauge, which can be quite expensive, here's a handy tip what to do. If you get a small piece of timber and a screw and insert the screw into the centre of the timber so you can adjust backwards and forwards and then place it onto your timber that you're marking face onto face and run a nice straight line down with the head of the screw. This is a very handy and very cheap way to do it. Coffee has another use, apart from being a drink. If you're trying to fill those dark wood doors and windows, take a bit of filler, put it in a tub, add a bit of coffee, mix it round, and it should be a much better match to the wood. for finding a level is to use a piece of hose with water filled in it within eight inches from the top. Water will always find its own level. Once you have got a mark that you want to transfer, it doesn't matter what distance you move, you can always transfer that datum easily without any expensive equipment. And this is accurate to within one sixteenth of an inch per mile. An important thing to remember when building a wall before your capping course goes on is keep it covered. The reason being if water and frost get in, it can damage your wall before you've built it. When setting out a timber stud partition and you need to get a perfect right angle, if you get yourself a piece of plywood and cut it down to three foot, four foot and then five foot and put into place, you have a perfect right angle and a perfect setting out point. When you're sealing the gap between a sink or a bath and a tiled surface, you simply put two strips of masking tape, one each side, silicon along, wet your finger, run along like so, peel back the paper, and you've got a nice clean joint. If changing your roof tiles from traditional clay ones to the modern concrete alternative, remember that the concrete ones are often half as heavy again, so you need to check your roof otherwise you could have structural problems. Here's the best tip of all. If you don't understand something, ask a recognised builder. We're not all cowboys.